Hey guys, Ivan here and this video we are starting with this absolutely ridiculous physique update of Samson Dauda just standing there with his back relaxed and looking like an absolute monster. It's funny because Samson's back is basically his weak point, that's his weakest body part or at least it was. Does it still look like a weak point? Hell no, hell no, it looks like a strong point actually. I mean I've seen a lot of updates of bodybuilders lately but I wasn't impressed with a back as much as I am with Samson's back right now because he created a full blown turtle shell, look at those slabs of meat, look at those lower lats, look at the traps everything just looks so big, he gained so much muscle in that back, it's ridiculous. I'm really curious to hear what he changed about his approach, because up until earlier this year actually, at the Arnold Classic, his back was still a weak point, and it definitely doesn't look like it's still a weak point, I don't know what did he do to it, but it looks like he gained so much muscle in that back, it's crazy, it's insane. It's not normal, it's not something you see every day, it's not something you see very often. I'm really curious, what did he do? Because I wanna do it as well, and I'm sure all of you guys would like to know the secret. Could it be that he simply grew everywhere and his back just got bigger? Or did he ch I think he changed something. I think he did something different about his approach to training back because I think the biggest difference is in that back. Again, it was a weak point and here, right now, he looks like freaking Ronnie Coleman. He really reminds me of Ronnie Coleman. Look at his back. Does it remind you? Let me refresh your memory. I mean, of course, there is only one Ronnie Coleman, he is the greatest of all time, he's definitely much better than Samson in pretty much every aspect. I'm not saying that Samson is close to Ronnie Coleman's level, I'm just saying his back kind of reminds me of those photos of Ronnie that I saw, such as this one. So if you take a look at the lads, the lads themselves, they are definitely much bigger on Ronnie. As you can see, they're hanging really low. They are just bigger. I mean, Ronnie's lats are not from this world. And as far as straps, the structure is different. They are kind of close, actually, in that regard. But what Samson has, actually, is that inner part of the lats. And do not confuse those muscles with spinal erectors. Spinal erectors are somewhere below those crazy-looking massive lats. That Samson structure, he has just simply a lot of meat in in that inner area, as far as the outer lats, he's a little bit weaker, but he definitely gained a lot of muscle in that back, and overall, I mean, if you don't dissect it like that to different parts of it, overall, he has a lot of meat on that back, and that back is definitely not gonna be a weak point this year. And yeah, I compared Samson to that previous photo, I also stumbled upon this photo when I searched the Ronnie Coleman relaxed bag and I didn't want to use this because this looks like something that's not even human, I didn't want to use this photo. But still you get the idea of how much Samson progressed, he definitely transformed that bag and this year the Mr. Olympia is going to be a serious threat. But what would make a great comparison would be Samson Dauda versus Andrew Jack, because these guys are often compared. Both of these guys are kind of dark horses and they are expected by some people to be potentially in top 6 at the Mr. Olympia. And I'm really curious who is going to place ahead of who. I might make a video where I'm comparing these two physiques, but really until we see Samson step on stage, we won't really know what will he bring, because he definitely made a lot of progress this year. Thankfully, Samson will not have to compete against Ronnie Coleman, current Mr. Olympia is Big Remy, and his back is not exactly the best, it's also his weakest point, and I feel like it atrophied over the years, I think it was better when he was younger. This was about 5 years ago, 2017 Mr. Olympia, where Big Remy placed second after Phil Heath, and his back definitely looked better. Is it simply posing? I don't know, I don't care, I just know what I see, and his back looked better back then. His lower lats completely disappeared for some reason, this is last year's Mr. Olympia by the way. Uh, his upper back, his straps and rhomboids, it's not really that good either, I mean he has something going on up there but not much and from the middle back down to the waist there is nothing going on, just emptiness, nothing. Interestingly enough, we also got a video of Big Ramy standing relaxed and showing his back a little. It's not the same angle, you can't see it as clearly as you can see Samson, but you can still get the idea of Big Ramy's thickness, you know, back depth. And I gotta say, Samson looks definitely better just standing there relaxed. He is completely killing Big Ramy in this thing. Now, does this mean anything on stage? 
not too much and I'm not saying that Samsung can beat Big Ramy this year I'm just saying <laughs> what I'm seeing standing there relaxed both Ramy and Samson Samson looks so much better Big Ramy looks very flat in that back it's definitely his weakest point and it will be the Mr. Olympian maybe some of the guys like Samson can expose Big Ramy and maybe get a few points based on that Alright, next I want to talk about Joji Mufu again. I made a video about him yesterday, but I totally forgot to take something under consideration and a lot of people suggested this, that he might be using SEOs, Sintel. Is that what happened with his physique? Because he completely blurred all the lines in his quads. Not only did he blur them, if you listen to Milo Sharto when he talks about Sintel, he used Sintel in his arms and he says that he kind of lost function of those biceps and triceps. He couldn't connect with them anymore, he couldn't contract them properly and he says Sintel completely ruined his arms. So maybe the same thing happened with Joji Mufu, he thought he can grow his legs if he does that and he just made them look silly. I'm not sure if this is the case because there are other areas of his body that were for some reason somehow blurred. Let me show you a comparison from last year when he did the Olympia amateur. So he definitely had separation in his quads and his lower chest as well was there was a line, there was something happening, he had a separation between chest and abs, now there is nothing going on basically, abs and chest are not even separated, he, his chest is basically connected to his abdomen, so I don't know if it is Sintel, because what is happening with his chest then? doesn't make any sense honestly guys i'm so confused i was waiting for juji to make a response to this he didn't say anything so far once he does that i'll definitely post it here so subscribe if you want to see that but this is just another theory that people are speculating might be the case because his quads are definitely they look like they were shut up they definitely look like they're uh, they're destroyed with sintel but what would explain the chest then would he put sintel in his lower chest I don't know, maybe he would, <laughs> I'm not sure, whatever is happening here, it definitely does look very weird, I really want to know what happened, as you can see, last year he looked good, he looked decent, for sure, now, this year, at the North Americans, he looks like somebody who should have never stepped on the stage, he embarrassed himself with this edition, and I would really like to know the reason, what happened, if him or his coach, Dorian Hamilton, actually explain what is going on here, I'll be the first to make a video about it, so once again, guys, subscribe, subscribe. Alright, next, real quick, I have to mention Brandon Harding at two days out of his show. As you can see, his weight, his body weight went down to 205 pounds, which is actually more than I expected. In my video, I predicted him going down to 207 and being perfectly conditioned at that weight, but apparently he lost two more pounds and he got down to 205, which doesn't really matter. I mean, the weight is not that important. It's only about how good he looks and he has two more days as he says here his carb up is starting he has two days to carb up so he's probably gonna get a little bit heavier from this point he's probably gonna be at around 206 207 maybe we'll see as far as conditioning right now he does look amazing i think this is basically it this is enough I think he doesn't have to lose any more body fat, I think his conditioning is spot on, this is it, if he lost any more, his fullness would definitely suffer, I think he's spot on, as good as he can be this year, what he can improve is of course add more muscle over the years in the off season, but as far as this competitive season, I think he's just spot on, and now as he dehydrates himself even more and he carbs up completely, he's gonna look better and better, and do I see this physique getting a pro card in classic physique? I think he can do it. Even though he's not at the weight cap, which is amazing, he's not even at the weight cap, he actually has 15 more pounds to gain before he reaches the weight cap, 15 pounds, guys, that's a lot of muscle, that's a lot of muscle, so one thing is for sure, this guy is definitely getting that pro card at some point, if not this year, next year for sure, but I think he can do it this year too, and his future in this sport is super bright, if he turns pro at 205 pounds, in the pro league, he actually can weigh up to 230 pounds, so that's 25 pounds of freaking muscle that he can put on his physique over the next 5 or 10 years, 
Yeah, this guy has so much potential in classic physique. It's going to be amazing to see him progress. I hope he will keep pushing. I love to see his passion. I love to see how much he loves bodybuilding. And right now he looks great. And I can't wait to see him on stage. And I, I'm hoping and I think he will get that pro card this year. All right, the next thing or the next news that I wanted to share with you guys is Chris Bumstead basically announcing that he is filming a documentary with Generation Iron. Now, I don't know how to feel about that because Generation Iron hasn't really been promoting the sport, promoting bodybuilding in the best light possible. It looks like they are kind of trying to make drama where there is no need for it. Uh, it looks like they're trying to besmirch the name of bodybuilding. Also, the thing they did with, uh, with uh, Lee Priest... I mean, they made a documentary about him and he hated it. They actually got his mother to comment on him and Lee didn't even know about it. So I don't know what to expect of this. And I'm not sure if Chris made the right move by accepting something like this. Maybe it's going to turn out good. I don't know. Let me show you actually what Chris says about it. But as you guys saw, we have Generation Iron here. I'm not going to get too deep into what we're doing, but they're doing like a cool behind the scenes documentary going to come out probably in a year or so it'll be a minute hopefully it ends up good i believe in them so basically at the end of his uh, previous video he announces this he says you guys noticed generation iron was uh, filming me while i was training so basically they're making a documentary about him and about his uh, company and stuff like that so it's going to be out in about a year what it's gonna be exactly about and is it gonna be good or horrible i don't know whatever you guys think though about it tell me in the comment section down below if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel guys thank you so much for watching all the best and bye bye